All right, today is uh, another nutritional video. It's a part one of two parts, balancing your macronutrients for weight loss. And so what I wanna to cover today is what I think are, uh, at least my recommendations, for the percentages of macronutrients you should get. What are macronutrients? They're basically your carbohydrates, your lipids or fats, and then your proteins. And so for me, I like this percentage. I like two different uh, percentage schemes. 30% of your, mac your calories coming from your protein, 35% coming from good fats, and 35% coming from good carbohydrates. Okay, a lot of people say, well, carbohydrates aren't good. There are good carbohydrates. There are fiber-rich sources, things of that nature. Um, another uh, scheme that I like is 30% protein, 40% uh, good fats, healthy fats, and 30% of good carbohydrates. So those are kind of the two that I bounce between generally. I like both of those as far as percentages. And it basically those are percentages of your calories. If you wanted to figure those out, there's easy free things online like MyFitnessPal. But essentially, one gram of protein is four calories, one gram of carbohydrates is four calories, and one gram of fat is nine calories. So you could calculate it out if you wanted to. But again, I think some of those programs tend to make it really easy for you. Now, as far as the protein, I think this is a big deal. Now, you may not get the full 30%. It really depends on what your needs are. When we look at the recommendations, the RDA for protein is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight, which is actually a very low amount, but that's the base amount you need, you know, if you're not very active, things like that. So the recommendations for athletes, according to the International Society of Sports Nutrition, they say 1.2 to 2.0 grams per kilogram of body weight. Rather than do these calculations, which are not super hard, but rather than do the calculations, I always say shoot for about one gram per pound of body weight and you kind of hit that range. Again, when, when you look at studies, when they to see, you know, like excess amounts of protein, I think one study had over four uh, grams per kilogram of body weight just to see what the effects were. It didn't increase protein synthesis somewhere after like 2.4 or 2. Point something grams per kilogram of body weight. It didn't increase protein synthesis any more than that. So it wasn't giving people an advantage above and beyond that amount of protein. However, it didn't show any side effects either. Now, this is considering the fact that if you do not have kidney disease, if you have any issues with your kidneys or any kind of renal disease, which is kidney disease, or any kind of renal insufficiency, then you have to consider maybe lower protein intakes. Generally, if you're taking in a good amount of water, you have healthy kidneys, you're not gonna be getting too much protein to cause a problem. What happens is protein breaks down into ammonia, this byproduct, and ammonia goes to the liver to be converted to urea, which your kidneys flush out. Again, if those systems are healthy, you should be fine. Uh, I think sometimes people hype up that you're getting too much protein, it's so bad for you. Generally, unless you're eating massive amounts, you're, you're probably safe. So that 1.2 to 2.0 grams per kilogram of body weight is a very safe range to be in. I really target the protein, and the reason I'm talking about the protein is especially is because if you wanna make sure when you're losing weight, you don't lose muscle, you have to have that amount of protein or a good amount of protein. You have to make sure you maintain protein synthesis so your body doesn't catabolize the muscles while you're trying to you know, lose this weight. You don't wanna lose muscle weight. Muscle is the, one of the most highly metabolic tissues in the body. It actually burns calories, right? It uses more calories. So we don't wanna lose you know, not only strength, Maybe you're not a strength athlete, but you don't want to lose lean body mass because that actually raises your basal metabolic rate, which is basically the energy you need to survive. So it raises that rate and, and gives you a higher requirement for energy. Now, um, so we want to make sure we're getting enough protein. That to me is, is one of the number one things. Also, when you eat protein, it costs you more energy to break the protein down more than anything else. It's about 20-ish percent of the energy you intake of pro, uh, the calories it costs you that to actually break down the protein, so you're actually using more energy to, to digest that protein, which is a good thing. Um, when we're talking about healthy fats, we're talking about things like avocados, olive oil, which is my all-time favorite. Uh, these, are, these are primarily monounsaturated fats that are very, very good for you. They have a positive impact on your cholesterol and your, your quote-unquote good and bad cholesterol, which are like lipoproteins. Um, uh, the... Another good fat for you is coconut oil. 
Uh, coconut oil gets mixed reviews because it is the most saturated fat on the planet, and too much saturated fat can be bad. But about 63% of coconut oil is made up of these medium chain triglycerides, so the chains of the, the, the fatty acids are shorter and they're much more uh, easily absorbed. So it does not seem, at least according to the research that I've read, it's quite a bit, that it does not seem to impact cholesterol negatively. Again, this is a good fat, but don't overdo it. We can overdo it with anything, right? We don't need to put coconut oil on everything or have thousands of grams of coconut oil. Again, it's nine calories per gram. You know, balance out your macronutrients. That's a super important thing. As far as good carbohydrates, you're looking for things that are not sugar, right? That don't have a lot of sugar or at least or if you can have no sugar in or a very little sugar, we're looking for things that do not turn into sugar quickly, like white breads, which are delicious, I get it, but they're not good for you. White rice, delicious, not good for you. These things are practically sugar in your bloodstream almost as soon as they get broken down. Um, so, so avoiding those type of foods, having higher fiber type of foods, you know, things like you know, your Ezekiel breads, your nine grain breads if you're gonna do bread, things like sweet potatoes, uh, I like those a lot. So those are good sources of carbohydrates. Of course your vegetables, but vegetables are not high density carbs, so you're not getting a ton of carbs, but of course you wanna get lots and lots of veggies in, and you are gonna get some carbohydrates from those sources. I also love quinoa, which is a grain, but I'm not anti-grain. I also really, really like brown rice. You know, white rice has a glycemic index of about 81 or 2. Brown rice has a glycemic index somewhere between 52 and 55. And so it doesn't spike your blood sugar as much. Plus, the brown rice has tons of nutrients that have been stripped out of the white rice. Again, these are some good ideas, things that you can follow. In my next video, I'm going to give you a few specific ideas on a few meals you might be able to put together just to give you an idea. I'm no chef. I'm no cook. You know, so as far as meal plans, I can just give you an idea on how to balance your macronutrients, and that'll be my goal in the next video. If you have any questions, post them to YouTube. I'll see you next time. Stay strong.